Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk and welcome to Pseudoscientist number 11 of the 12 Pseudoscientists of Christmas. Today we're talking about someone who seems to be well known for getting things wrong about climate change. I am of course talking about Jordan Peterson. Now I'm not going to go over everything that Jordan Peterson has ever said about climate change because I'm sure that would take ages, that can be a job for someone else to do. Anyway, there's a particular clip that I wanted to take a look at by Jordan Peterson because he shouldn't get things as wrong as he does. It's like, it's hard to sort out. The climate change one is a weird one, so that well, one... Well, that's because there's no such thing as climate, right? Climate and everything are the same word. Well, clearly, Jordan Peterson here needs to have a talk to Jordan Peterson because it depends on what you mean by climate. But when it comes to climate change, climate isn't some nebulous thing that can mean anything. It's talking about the weather conditions and weather events that happen over a certain time. Things like average temperature, that's the climate. Things like average wind conditions, that is the climate. Things like hurricanes and storms, that is the climate. Things like the stock market, that's not the climate. Last I checked, the stock market was included in everything. So clearly, the terms everything and climate are not interchangeable. This is something that bothers me about it technically. It's like, well, climate is about everything. So okay, but your models aren't based on everything. Well, do you want to know one of the reasons why that is? It's going to be a shocker. It's because climate doesn't mean everything. Your models are based on Warming. A set number of variables. Yeah. So that means you've reduced the variables, which are everything, to that set. Well, how did you decide which set of variables to include in the equation if it's about everything? And that's not just a criticism. That's like, if it's about everything, your models aren't right. Because mm. your models do not and cannot model everything. Well, firstly, it's not about everything. For some reason, I have to make that point. But secondly, you don't actually have to include everything in models, just the relevant data. From relevant data, you can actually construct pretty good models for not just climate, but a lot of things. An example of this would be a Galton board, where balls fall and the distribution that they tend to fall in resembles a bell curve. There are a bunch of variables that you could try to use to work out where exactly all the balls are going to fall, but you don't really need all that. The normal distribution that it shows gives a good enough approximation of the results that we would expect to see. The same goes for climate models. You do not need need to include every single variable to get a good enough approximation of what the climate should look like. In fact, some variables such as aerosols can be very hard to predict, so you have to use estimates for that kind of variable. But as long as you are working with the relevant data, you should have a pretty good estimate as to what's going to happen. And if you were to try and use everything like Jordan Peterson suggests that you should, then it's really no different than including astrology in your physics calculations because it might have some small effect. You see, the experiment didn't work in Pisces, but I feel like it's more of a Virgo experiment, so we should try it then just to be sure. But we definitely need all the researchers to be Scorpios, otherwise it will definitely fail. What do you mean by everything when you say... Well, when, but that's, what, that's what people who talk about the climate apocalypse claim in some sense. We have to change everything. Mm. It's like, everything, eh? Needing to change everything is not the same thing as the climate being everything. And also, when people say, oh, we need to change everything, they usually don't mean literally changing everything. After all, there are plenty of things that just cannot be changed, like Stephen Crowder's mind, for example. Okay, what, and the same with the word environment. That word doesn't mean it, it means so much that it actually doesn't mean anything. Okay, I think Jordan Peterson is the only person here who's confused about what words mean. Like if I'm saying something like protect the environment and Jordan Peterson comes up to me and says, well, what do you mean by environment? I would be able to easily point to the things that I am talking about, like ecosystems, waterways, forests, carbon sinks, things like that. Most people have a pretty good idea of what is meant by the environment. Jordan, it's not that hard to figure out. But environment means everything, so if you want to protect the environment, you must be talking about protecting malaria. No, as far as I'm aware, that is not a crucial part of any ecosystem. Like when you say everything, in a sense that's meaningless, right? Because, well, what are you pointing to? Well, I'm pointing to everything. Well, yes, if someone is pointing to everything in the context of climate change, that is pretty meaningless. But 
That is when you, get this, have a conversation. Ask them, what do you mean? A lot of the times they will clarify, like in terms of what needs to change, they might say, oh, well, we need to move away from fossil fuels and replace them with renewables. Or they might say that our current way of designing cities is pretty unsustainable, so we need to design cities where people are incentivized to use less petrol. There are plenty of things that people say that we should do, and whilst I don't agree with all of them, like getting rid of nuclear, for example, I think there are a lot of steps that can be taken. Well, what's the difference between the environment and everything? There's no difference. Well, there is a difference. If I say protect everything, then people might be very confused about what I mean. But if I say protect the environment, then people have a pretty solid idea of what I mean about that. A good example of this would be, if I say protect the environment, something like protecting forests would fall under that. However, protecting a residential block that no one lives in from demolition to plant more trees would not be counted as protecting the environment. We don't really consider that residential block to be a part of the environment when we talk about, let's say, protecting it. So yes, the environment can mean a lot of things, but when we talk about it, we can get a pretty good idea of what is being talked about. What's the difference between climate and everything. Well, I think I answered that question earlier. The stock market isn't really a part of the climate. So this is a crisis of everything? It's like, no, it's not. Or if it is, well, if it really is, then we're done because we can't fix everything. Well, when people say that it's a crisis of everything, there's one of two things that they could mean. Either everything's affecting it or it is affecting everything. If they're just talking about the latter, then you don't need to fix everything to solve the problem. But if they're talking about the former, that is where things get interesting. Because whilst everything may have an effect, that does not mean that the effects are evenly distributed. Certain things can have more of an impact and it's better to focus on the things that do have more of an impact rather than things that only have a tiny impact in comparison. Like we could talk about plastic pollution. Plastic is everywhere. You're not gonna be able to get rid of all of it. But there are things that you can focus on that have a bigger impact. Like a lot of people talked about plastic straws and that's why we have paper straws now. But the thing that I get annoyed about is the fact that a lot of the containers that we use the plastic straws in themselves have plastic in them. I think that an entire container of plastic has a bit more impact than a plastic straw. But that aside, if you do fix a lot of the problems that we have with the overuse of plastics, then you can make a difference for the better. It doesn't have to be that we completely remove plastic from everything. We just have to reduce our use of plastic to a point where it becomes manageable. Likewise, when it comes to climate change, we don't have to get rid of every single emission that we produce, we just have to reduce them to a point where we can manage them. And some of that isn't necessarily reducing all the emissions that we produce, but instead helping carbon sinks to absorb those emissions. Well, what we have to. What they mean specifically is the human, what, what human beings are doing that's causing the earth to warm. Right, so right, it's... but you have to include all these factors in the models to determine yeah. that. All these factors. Well, what can you not include? Well, then, by deciding what you don't include, you decide which set of variables are cardinal. And you have to make that decision in some sense before you even generate the models. This is a big problem. It's literally just working out which variables are relevant or not. Like, sure, you can try and include the gravitational effect that Jupiter has on the Earth if you want, but the effect that that would have is so minuscule that you might as well just not include it. And a lot of the things that do have an impact are known, like CO2 has been known to be a greenhouse gas for more than a century now. A lot of it is just working out, okay, how might these things change in the coming years and what kind of impact will that have on the planet? Are there important things that sometimes get overlooked? Sure, that does happen, but that's what continued research is about finding. But as it currently stands, the research shows that human emissions are warming the planet. There's another reason that, another problem that bedevils climate modeling too, which is that as you stretch out the models across time, the errors increase radically. And mm. so maybe you can predict out a week or three weeks or a month or a year, but the farther out you predict, the more your model's in error. Does, does, does he think that climate models are trying to predict the climate in a week's time? From what I've seen, models tend to be a lot broader than that, like the climate over the course of a year, for example. It's not trying to predict the weather for the weather station. That's a separate issue. As for his point about models having more errors as time goes on, yes, that is a thing, 
because there are a lot of different things that can happen in the future that can impact the climate. Like for example, humans could put more aerosols into the atmosphere or we could put less aerosols into the atmosphere and that would change what is going to happen. That could have a knock-on effect as to how much melting of polar ice caps occur, which changes the albedo of the planet, which changes how much warming there is. It's not as simple as just plugging one number in and working out the results. There are multiple factors that can impact stuff, and those impacts that they have can also have knock-on effects themselves. So yes, as time goes on in the models, there's going to be a larger margin of error, because a lot more things can happen as time goes on. That doesn't necessarily mean that the models are incorrect, it just means that there are certain things that the models might not be able to predict in advance. In fact, it's already the case that even if the climate models are right, the error bars are so wide by 100 years out that we'll never be able to measure the effects of the changes we're making now. That's not true at all because there are a lot of things that we cannot predict in advance, but when we get to that point, we know exactly what the values will be. Like, if there's a year where a huge volcanic eruption happens and that has a big impact on the climate, then we can measure the impact that that would have. The models cannot predict that because, well, they are not designed to predict volcanic eruptions. So yes, we can measure our impacts, especially when we have data on this is what else actually happened. This really is basic stuff that Jordan Peterson should be able to figure out for himself, but to be fair, he might just be stuck on trying to figure out what words mean. But anyway, I'm going to leave that there. Leave a like and subscribe if you like this video, and leave a comment letting me know who you think the next pseudoscientist will be. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons. Huge R's, MC Nutkin, Tony C, Rashina Keller, Ray, Kid Vicious, definitely not NASA, Maury, Kaylee, and Fist Wizard. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. There should be a link there. Or you could buy me a coffee. I... We'll see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.